righty, well today, folks, one of the legends of television, legends of children's television, uh, indeed with us today. You may have seen him on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Our guest today is David Newell, Mr. McFeely. Welcome, David. Thank you, John, and speedy delivery. <laughs> speedy delivery, yes. Indeed, always speedy <laughs> delivery. I, I, wish, I wish the modern day we needed more speedy delivery folks out there, I mean, giving us good deliveries. You were always good on delivery to Fred Rogers. <laughs> well, this is, uh, if you would count from the day I started uh, on the neighborhood, this would be almost its 50th, 52 years, I think. It's oh, wow. been, it's still available. I, I don't know if your uh, viewers know that, but you can go to pbskids.org and it's on an app. There's an app you can download and you can see 400 Mr. Rogers programs. Still, it's still with us. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot of parents and uh, now uh, children. I mean, I, in my situation, I'm, my kids grew up. My kids are uh, 28 and 31. They grew up watching uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood and watching you as uh, Mr. McFeely on there. And uh, and uh, certainly, I grew up in the 70s and 80s. And I, I'm sure you see a lot of this uh, parents and even maybe grandparents, parents, and children that have grown up watching you. Oh yes, and I'm meaning now. I'm meaning the grandchildren of people who grew uh -huh. up with Mr. Rogers. It, it, it came on the air in 68, 1968, and I thought I had a job for one year. Uh -huh. it, and I knew who Fred Rogers was, but this was the sort of, call, a sort of a reboot of a local version of Mr. Rogers that went national. And it was underwritten by the Sears Roebuck Company. And I thought, well, I'll have a job for one year. We did 130 programs uh, that first year, 130 mm -hmm. half-hour programs. My goodness. And I thought, well, that's it. But then it was renewed and renewed and renewed and renewed, and here I am, still making deliveries. I think, I, if I remember right, I think your original name was uh, somebody with the Sears Roebuck folks, and then they changed it, or you changed it over to, uh, I guess, Fred Rogers' middle name, correct? Yeah, that's right. The first name of the character... The, the name of the character I play is was to be Mr. McCurdy because that was the uh, name of the foundation director at Sears who gave the money to underwrite. And the phone oh. rang the first day of taping. I was in my costume, ready to go, and Fred went into the control room to take the call, and Mr. McCurdy was calling to wish us well, saying everything is great, we love the concept, etc. He, he said, but one thing, do me a favor, don't call the delivery man, Mr. McCurdy. I think maybe they thought it was too close for comfort or something. <laughs> so, so Fred came back in the studio and he said, okay, well, we'll find a name. And he came back in and I could tell he was thinking, he came right up to me, so we have to get you a new name. And before he got that sentence out practically, he said, McFeely. That's who you are. You're Mr. McFeely, and that's his middle name. It's Fred McFeely Rogers, mm -hmm. and that's a family name. There in in the uh, Western Pennsylvania area, there are a lot of McFeelys. It's a it's a I guess it's an Irish name, I guess Irish Scotch, mm -hmm. and it's uh, there's a lot of Irish Scotch in uh, in Western Pennsylvania. So I'm Mr. McFeely. <laughs> well, you know, I've known uh, through time you guys cross paths with a lot of famous folks that would uh, cross paths with the Fred Rogers and your sh uh, show, uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Uh, basically, I, I know that you have a story about Margaret Hamilton. I was a big uh, visitor. Uh, Margaret Hamilton, from Wizard of Oz fame, the witch. Could you tell us a little about yes. that in interaction? Well, uh, you know, to this day, people, when they show Wizard of Oz online now, I guess, but it was always shown on the, the network, for years and years and years, and people would say, you know, I'm grown up now, but that witch still scares me. And it scared me when I was three, and it scares me when I'm 33. And I, I told Fred, who writes his own material, he wrote all of the shows, and he wrote his, the, the songs and the music. And I said, Fred, do you think that we could do something about sort of uh, uh, images, scary images? We, uh, and I said, for instance, Margaret Hamilton, it gets upset too because her her character scares a lot of kids and uh, Fred said to me if you can find Margaret Hamilton I'll write the script <laughs> <laughs> so I found Margaret Hamilton she was touring in a in a musical mm -hmm. and in Boston and I sent the scripts to her and her agent said she'd love to do it and 
she came to Pittsburgh and we, we did the, uh, the taping and it was one of the best programs, one of my favorites. And it really helped a lot of families with young children with scary images. Today of all days, mm -hmm. the, the Halloween is uh, today and and we be, be continuing this week they have parties after halloween too and somebody's always dressed up in some sort of a scary costume uh -huh. and three-year-olds four-year-olds don't separate fantasy and reality and they they're frightened so our program addressed them and it was very successful we had a lot of letters thanking us for that and believe it or not i mean uh, being uh, i'm a meteorologist the tornado from uh, Wizard of Oz, that scared me as a kid, and that got me kind of more into weather, believe it or not. I, I wish Fred would have talked a little bit more about also maybe some weather phenomena. Do you ever talk anything about tornadoes and earthquakes and stuff? Do you ever recall? He, not directly. I, okay. He talked about, uh, <laughs> oh, uh, uh, I guess unexpected uh, occurrences, like a, uh, like a heavy rainstorm sure, or something. Sure. We, we never... I don't know if a three and four year old. I, I don't know. That's that's a good question. That would have been... I really don't know how to answer that. Other than we never did deal with that, but but indirectly we did because Margaret Hamilton, in uh, when she visited Fred in his television house, she related to some of the incident, the uh, what happened in the movie. Mm -hmm. So in a way, she she referred to the hurricane, but not in, in depth. But. Nevertheless, the, the, her appearance really helped a lot of families. Oh, sure, sure. I mean, especially when kids realize that that's just, you know, she's just a human being and she was just, and that was acting. But I can see you how much you all helped out a lot of kids to get over that fear. That, that, that's right. She, she said, I'm a, you know, I'm not a, a scary person. I'm, she came in her, her civilian clothes, so to mm -hmm. speak, and she said, I'm an actress. That's my job. And I pretend that I'm different characters. And then... That movie, I pretended that I was this mean witch, but I'm not really. And it really, it really helped. Uh, we got a lot of letters from parents who said, "Thank you, thank you for for dealing with that." Because I don't, up to that point, not many programs had dealt with it. Fred dealt with things like that that would be potentially scary for very young children, and he separated fantasy and reality. Mm -hmm. Young children don't do that. A 12-year-old does, but a three, four, five-year-old, it's all lumped together. And that's why he went out of his way to separate the program. When he came into the program and looked at the camera, that was a reality. And then he said, let's pretend in the neighborhood of make-believe that this is happening. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the program, he brought it back to reality again. So he separated the two. And he thought that was very important for very young children who, uh, the, 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 who don't separate it. Does uh, anything else stand out? I mean, I mean, with uh, the years and years of being on the show, any other episodes that just stood out and you said, "Wow, this is just excellent television." A a a any other? Uh, I mean, episodes that just uh, re that really struck you as wow, you know that. Uh, yes, uh, the other one was similar in mm -hmm. in because my daughter, when she was three years old, and the Incredible Hulk <laughs> was on television. Oh, okay. And it was on at eight o'clock or something like that. And she was to go up to bed. She was three or four, little enough to be curious about what this Incredible Hulk is. And we said, come upstairs, come upstairs. And she was watching it. We, To make a long story short, she had a nightmare mm -hmm. about the Incredible Hulk. And uh, I mentioned to Fred what happened. He said, well, let's, let's invite the Incredible Hulk to be on the program. Well, as it turned out, we went to Universal Studios and we watched them tape an episode of The Incredible Hulk. But we also watched Lou Ferrigno, who played the Hulk, uh -huh. get into his green makeup and, and his fright wig and all of that. And again, it demystified that scary image. And then Bill Bixby, who directed the program, was interviewed too about how they make the program and what well, this is our form of uh, fantasy mm -hmm. pretending that the this man the incredible hulk can turn over cars and lift an airplane up in the air etc but that really can't happen and that he was explaining that to our audience and that that was a favorite program of mine because because again i think it helped it helped children it certainly helped our daughter Sure, uh, sure. When she saw the program, she's now has a three-year-old of her own. But oh. 
at the time, it really helped her. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm sure maybe even her now, even some of those episodes could help modern day children. Because I'm sure a lot of kids are still with modern day, like Marvel and DC Comics. There's a little bit of, hey, crossover, and they, you know, get into a lot of these kids see a lot of this modern day uh, movies, and they get a little scared of stuff, I'm sure. Oh, no, I, oh, I agree with you. I, the movies today get pretty uh, scary for yeah. very young kids, and parents, I think, take them to those movies, and I think they. I wouldn't take a three-year-old to to a scary movie. I, first of all, you have to know your child. Some are, mm -hmm. some can handle it maybe, and some can't. You really have to determine what your child is capable of. But a lot of movies these days mm -hmm. uh, uh, are very scary, and I hope that some people see this to these two programs, the Margaret Hamilton and the Hulk program, because the scary images I think will help help young children understand this. Just sure. pretend. I'm sure, and and uh, now uh, still on the same subject. I mean, I hear you've got some collections of like uh, Mr. I think you got one of uh, Mr. Fred Rogers' uh, sweaters in your collection. Uh, right? I have a, 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 what in my collection? Uh, a, a, a sweater from Fred. Yes, yes, it's uh, hanging on the wall behind me. Can you see it? I, I, th yeah, I think so. Yeah, there, there you go. <laughs> there it is. There's I, it, it's I trying to point to it. It's right uh -huh. there. There you go. There you go. That's that's an official Fred Rogers sweater right there. <laughs> it is, and uh, he had oh about ten. Okay. And one day he was uh, uh, eliminating some, and he said, "Here, uh, why don't you take these two? And I did. He he was giving to cool. us a gift as a souvenir, and I brought them home and I put them in our our closet in our bedroom and one day our son uh who was an adult at the time uh i guess he was 1920 mm -hmm. it was my birthday and uh he took this a sweater and had it framed and surprised me with that sweater and it was really really i never thought that he would do that or even knew that the sweaters were there Mm -hmm. But every time I look at it, I, that reminds me so much of the years that I spent working on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, which were, which were just wonderful time for me. It was a genuine pleasure to work with Fred Rogers and learn so much from him. He wasn't a, an actor. He was a communicator. Mm -hmm. And he had a degree in child development, a degree in, in music and a, a degree in uh, psychology. And all of those uh, elements work together. He, he used them all in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood to help to help children. And I could have, I, could, <laughs> I feel like I have a master's degree in child development by working with my dope. My degree is in uh, English lit and theater, but uh, I feel I have a degree in child development just by absorbing what he had to say. Basically the school of Fred Rogers. <laughs> That's School of Fred Rogers, yes. <laughs> well, no. And he was, a, he was a teacher. You know, he he saw himself as a, as himself as a communicator, but he uh, was a teacher yes, on indeed. television. Yes, indeed. Uh, and what he didn't want to be was an actor. Uh -huh. And he, he, that's not what he, he got. What you saw on television basically was Fred Rogers. It was his honest self. That was Fred. He, he was a very, very smart man very intelligent, had a wonderful sense of humor, mm -hmm. and some of that humor comes out in King Friday and Lady Lane Fairchild. Mm -hmm. But he was a, 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 a kind man. He was what you, you know, it was not a, an act. That was Fred. He was he's a genuine communicator who had the mission of helping children through television. Mm -hmm. And that's what he did for his entire career. Now I hear that you are a big fan of Laurel and Hardy. I am. <laughs> How about the Piano Movers? Did you ever see that one? Oh yes. Oh yes, yeah. Yes. The music, it's called The Music Box. Yeah, okay, yes. Yeah, the, that. And do you know that The Music Box was the only film of Laurel and Hardy that won an Academy Award? Really? For the I did not know that. Short subject. Oh, and a little bit of addition to that. Uh -huh. uh, one of my jobs, I did Mr. McFeely, and I worked on production, but later on, I was in charge of the public relations for Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, mm -hmm. and I, I booked Fred on Good Morning America, the, the, the talk show. All right. And uh, on the show that day, just by chance, was Stan Laurel's daughter. My gosh. And she, she was there promoting the colorization 
of the Laurel and Hardy oh. films. And that was what she was doing, and we met her there. And I went up to her and I said, oh, her, her name was Lois. Lois mm. Laurel, I believe. And I said, uh, uh, Ms. Laurel, uh, I loved your father. And she said, well, his granddaughter watches Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Oh, <laughs> and about, and about, about that? three weeks later, I sent her some LPs at the time. That's uh -huh. we were, our music was on 33 and a third. Sent her some LPs for her granddaughter. And then about three weeks after that, I got this letter in the mail, and inside was a canceled check to the California Cleaners uh -huh. signed by Stan Laurel. Oh, my. Oh, there you go. Oh, my and goodness. And she must, she must have kept his checks because it was 1929 on, on the check uh -huh. for like something like $35 to the California Cleaners. But I have it framed now. It's a, a, a prized possession, and I loved Laurel and Hardy, and I, and Fred did too. And in fact, the other person that he liked uh, in it was W. C. Fields. I don't right. know if you know who that is. Oh, sure, you? sure, I know who W. C. Fields. Yes. A lot of people don't, but well, uh, each Christmas before VCRs came mm -hmm. in, the Rogers family had a 16 millimeter projector, okay. and I gave them a. Laura and Hardy short or a W.C. Field short for Christmas each year. <laughs> and they liked it because he has two boys and mm -hmm. his, his wife is a musician, Fred's a musician, and the two boys are now, one lives in Florida and one lives in Pittsburgh. But uh, they all loved Laura and Hardy and W.C. Fields. And I love giving it to them because we would oh, have sure. a, a party and watch the, the film together. Uh, now, and uh, I also, again, I hear that you all also are more a fan of also some silent movies, the silent generation of movies. I mean, uh, is that correct, that you're a big fan of that, uh, the silent movies? I am. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of, uh, I belong to an organization called the Theater Historical Society, uh -huh. and that not directly with silent films, but it's the preservation of theaters in a lot of cities have these magnificent old theaters that they tear okay. down and make a parking lot. And our organization tries to say, well, maybe you could repurpose the building and make it a, a an assembly hall or a, a center, an entertainment mm -hmm. center. Don't tear this, these wonderful buildings down. And they do, and mm -hmm. I can understand it costs money to make them go. But nevertheless, that's my small little mission. Well, to, that's, a, that's a good to, mission. To help, that's a good to mission help, to have. Uh, cities realize that they can make make something out of their uh, old movie theaters as Pittsburgh did they had two big and still do two big uh, movie palaces and they turned it into Heinz Hall and the Benedum Center and they're uh, they are uh, named after the families who gave the money to uh, restore them all right, and what did you think of the, uh, well, and now uh, speaking of movies and stuff, the movie about you and Fred Rogers, uh, Mr. Uh, that Tom Hanks did, what did you think of that movie? You know, I, I like the movie, uh, and I would have loved to, to have heard Fred's reaction. Of course, that was impossible, but I think that Tom Hanks got the essence of Fred. Mm -hmm. He didn't look exactly like Fred. Fred was much thinner. Mm -hmm. uh, and his his voice pattern is a little little different, but Hanks got the essence. And when I was watching the film, I bought it. You know, oh. I knew it was Tom Hanks, mm -hmm. but it worked. And uh, Hanks did a lot of research on the uh, the film. But but two months before they they filmed it in Pittsburgh, a lot of it, he came to the uh, Fred Rogers Center, which is a college in uh, St. Vincent's College in. Latrobe, Pennsylvania, where all the archives are and the scripts and mm -hmm. the speeches, and studied Fred and what he wrote, and he did his homework, mm -hmm. and I think it shows in the film. Uh, it, it, I I liked it. I have a little cameo in it too. There's a small little cameo. If you ever oh, see cool. it again, watch uh, watch for it. We're at a dinner table in a restaurant, Alrighty. so if you watch for it, uh, you you have to look fast. I'm there though. <laughs> Okay, so a little cameo in there. That, that's great. That's great. And uh, before, in a few minutes, we still got left. What does your future hold now? I mean, you've gone through, I mean, you're, you've had a, a wonderful life, it looks like, you know, uh, from all that you've done. Where, where do you go from here? 
P pardon me, I missed that. No, uh, where do you go from here? I, you said you've had a wonderful life. It looks yeah, like you're, you're, up, you're up there. You've had a great life now, and then you still got many more years left. You, I mean, you got what? Another 20, well, 30 what, years, what I, easy, right? What I want to do, well, well, I have six grandkids, so uh -huh. they keep me busy. That's that's there you go. that's part of it. But what I'm doing now is trying to put together a book. All right. Of my years working with Fred and stories about the program and maybe a story, the Margaret Hamilton story, something like that, uh -huh. sprinkled throughout the book. But I want to give an overview of what Fred was like. Now, there's mm -hmm. been books written about him, but this is my perspective. I'm going to call it maybe Speedy Delivery or uh, the Speedy Delivery Files or something like no. that. <laughs> so, but that's what I'm working on now. And as you know, writing anything is not easy. And uh, I'm racking my brain trying to think of, oh, you know, I'm, I'm doing right now, I'm doing a uh, sort of a list of just one or two words just to click my memory. Mm -hmm. And so I can make an outline and start writing. I have about three chapters done. So that's what I hope to do uh, in the next year or so or however long it takes me. Oh, I, I, I think you, you look, you, know, you just turned 84 just recently or? Yeah, that's right. That's yeah, right. So you look excellent for 84. You look like Jack Benny, 39, right? <laughs> that's right. I'm, I, that's you're, you're absolutely right. I'm 39. You know, I wonder how many people remember Jack Benny. The oh. other day, I, I had a. I was going through my DVDs, and uh -huh. I have a Jack Benny show on DVD. And I showed it to a friend, and there was a blank stare. Mm -hmm. He he didn't know who Jack Benny was, and that, that's. So I informed him. That was one of my favorites when I was growing up was Jack Benny. Uh, and a lot of people don't know who he is. I, I, well, and, and hopefully people will catch, you know, they can go and catch it definitely on the Internet. I mean, now on YouTube, yeah, there's a lot of Jack Benny on YouTube, and I'm sure there's oh, a lot oh, of yes, DVDs. Oh, yes, there up. is now. Yeah, but and, you have to know the name first before you go look. Sure, for sure, it. I know. And, 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 and the lost... Uh, uh, that, uh, you know, people, I'm sorry, go ahead. Other, uh, I was going to say that the YouTube, you can find anything oh, on yes. YouTube. Oh, yes. It's remarkable. You just have to have two, two words, and 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 you find it. And it gives them the gives you the whole. In fact, I was doing that with uh, Jane Fonda this mm -hmm. week in Pittsburgh. She spoke, and I had a chance to meet her at a reception. And I was wondering what I couldn't remember all of her films. And I just put in Jane Fonda, and up came her complete life story and her history and the films and her everything. And it's remarkable, all of that. I don't know how they do that on every single actress and actor and politician. It's mm -hmm. remarkable. So you, you can't get lost. I mean, you know, I, I was saying lost talent, but uh, now many people can discover those talents, such as Jack Benny or even Jane Fonda, uh, with the, the platforms yeah, we have out there. We got so many platforms from Netflix to YouTube, and you can go and just put their name in there, and you will find so much information. Yeah, the, the, and I, I, I look up uh, the neighborhood every so often uh -huh. to see what people, and people can add things to it, too. Oh, well, sure, sure. That's remarkable. But, I, but I've done a lot of traveling, uh, uh, as Mr. McFeely, to, over the last, what, 30, 40, 50 years, to public stations. And I've been to every uh -huh. state in the Union now, including Guam and uh, the Virgin Islands. Can can I say one more thing? All right. Two things. Remind your viewers that they can still see Mr. Rogers on PBSKids.org. And we're going to end by, I'm going to count to three, and we're okay. both going to say speedy delivery. All right. Okay, that's how we'll end. All right? All right. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Speedy, speedy delivery. delivery.